You can watch the best parts of this series at MedCircle.com. Fortnite, it's the most disruptive video game release of the decade. It boasts 250 million users and counting, which is over two thirds of the US population. So what makes it so addictive? And how can its addictive nature hurt the mental well-being of the players? Dr. Joseph, in your private practice, you have treated both children and adults with video game addiction, correct? Correct. And right now, what would you say is the number one game people are addicted to? Fortnite, for sure. Fortnite, for sure. For sure. Okay, now I <laughs> apparently live under a rock because I know the basics of the game, but what, what is this game? So Fortnite is highly addictive, and here's why. They've developed the perfect recipe for addiction. The game is seemingly endless. It's seamless, meaning you really feel as if you're part of that world. And also it's multiplayer. So you're part of this community, sometimes worldwide community, mm -hmm. and you're on missions together. So it hits the achievement mark, right? Because you're going from goal to goal. You are you have part of a community, you have friends, and it's highly immersive. Yeah. You are in this world that no one else is a part of in your home. We talk so much in the mental health space about how community and being involved in community is so great for our mental health. But these digital communities are actually giving a false sense of community and hurting our mental mm -hmm. health and causing people to be um, addicts. I mean, I've heard of people playing Fortnite for 14, 15, mm -hmm. 16 hours a day, not going to school, not going to their job and putting this as a priority over everything else. And it's not real. It Correct. is a game. It is not a tangible thing that you can touch. How is something like this so addicting? Well, if you ask those kids, are you alone? They'd say, no, I'm gonna meet my buddies. Wow. That has replaced face-to-face -face interaction, unfortunately. Yeah. And what are the consequences of that? The consequences are that you have a generation that th can't empathize. They don't know how to communicate face-to-face. -face. They're socially anxious. And ultimately they are lonely and depressed because mm -hmm. you can't survive just playing Fortnite. Very few people can do that. And those are very professional gamers, but the majority of kids cannot. I wanna poll our YouTube viewers right now. If you are a Fortnite player, I want you to put in the comment section, how many hours a day you play. If you are a parent of a Fortnite player, I want you to put how many hours your child plays per day. And then I want you guys to look through those comments and see how many hours a day are being put, in, put into this game. What would constitute someone having an actual addiction? And we use that word on purpose. We're not throwing it around. We're actually using the word addiction. What would constitute someone having an addiction to Fortnite? When you're not able to function because of the gaming. So if you're an adult, and you are playing for hours on end, you're not getting your deadlines done, you're not engaging with your family life, you're not taking care of your responsibilities, you're abandoning the real world for the game, that can be an addiction. When you're needing higher and higher dosages of that game, of playing that game to get the same high, that is an addiction. Mm. When you are physically uh, uncomfortable, when you have um, despair because you're not playing that game, that is an addiction. That's very true. We filmed an entire series on video game addiction. You mentioned two things from that series that just blew my mind. One, that when video game addicts go cold turkey from video games, mm -hmm. they experience very similar withdrawal symptoms mm -hmm. as a substance abuser or a drug addict would. Correct. The second thing that you told me that blew my mind is that people are wearing diapers mm -hmm so that they don't have to leave the game, so that they can play it longer. Now, these are extreme signs of video game addiction. Those are extreme cases yes, that are well course. studied. This is not mm -hmm. like, oh, everybody, everywhere. Mm -hmm. But it shows how far this addiction can go. Correct. What are some of the starting signs that a child, a teen, or even an adult mm -hmm. would be moving in the addiction direction when it comes to their Fortnite gaming? They're lying about their gaming. Mm -hmm. They're breaking the rules to game. Mm. They've stopped talking to you. Mm. They've shut down. They're no longer engaged in their social world because right. they have another world that they're living in. They're not sleeping well. They're irritable. They're showing signs of depression and anxiety when they're not playing the game. Those are all signs that someone is developing a, de a dependence issue. You know, I've never ever asked our viewers to share a video. I've mm. never asked for it because I thought people will share a video if they want to share a video. 
but we all know somebody who plays Fortnite or whose parents have a child who plays Fortnite. And I think knowing those signs is such an easy thing to understand. And if they understand it, they can prevent a possible addiction because unfortunately, video game addiction, like any addiction, is ruining the lives of people and they're ruining the lives of a lot of young people. So if you're watching this and you know somebody who plays Fortnite uh, or you wanna share it with your social channels, take this video and share it. Knowing these signs is the first step of uh, moving in the right direction. What are you hoping that we'll see in the video game addiction arena, let's say in the next 10 or 20 years? I'm hoping that more parental measures are put involved, uh, are put in place. Mm -hmm. I think that parents need to be educated about how to protect their kids from potentially addictive behaviors. But you know what? Most parents don't even know that they can go into the video game and change the settings. I didn't know that. I didn't. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I didn't. Know well, that, hopefully, right? parents at home are learning yeah. about how to do that right now. Yeah, yeah. Parents are educating themselves about uh, overusing devices in general. Mm -hmm. I think that it's important that the culture at home has to change where people are talking more face to face because if we're gonna have this generation of people who don't know how to socialize, who don't know how to empathize because they're constantly looking down or on their computers. You got it. You know, you said something during our series on video game addiction that also stuck with me, which is that the creators of the games mm -hmm. do not allow their children to play them. Right. And these are the people who understand the psychology that goes behind making these games addictive. It was truly eye-opening. If you wanna watch that series, you can at medcircle.com. We go over what causes video game addiction, what it looks like, when is the right time to seek a professional, and when can you as a parent intervene and have success, and also the different treatment options available to uh, those that have video game addiction. I'm Kyle Kittleson, and remember, whatever you're going through, you got this. Thanks for watching. Your next step is to go to medcircle.com and finish watching this series. There you can also access other series and get actionable advice and simple explanations. Continue your mental health journey at medcircle.com and I'll see you there.